Hey Saab people, I know what you're thinking. DO88 again? Yes. What on you ask? Well, go watch the last video. I've got a brand new Saab here. Well, new to me, this thing's kind of a piece of junk, but we're gonna transform it. So basically what we're doing in this video, I gotta lift this thing up, put it on jack stands, then use the lift to pull an engine out of this thing so that I can take off the subframe for painting and I have to do the transmission. And while everything's out of the way, uh, after putting it all back together, I'm gonna throw the DO88 stuff in. So to get started, what we're gonna have to do is pull this front bumper, pull the hood, pull the battery box, and just get ready for this huge mess of a job that I'm about to do. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the battery so that when I disconnect other things, I don't get any weird codes. So that should be common practice for all vehicles, but especially these sobs. It's a myth that keeping batteries on the ground ruins their charge. Learned that at school. So don't worry about putting it on a piece of wood that's not gonna change anything. Now I gotta take out this battery box. So now I'm going to remove this front plate here. Uh, it looks like it's one, two, three, four. I mean, you can count, it's all the bolts on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. All right, taking off the front bumper, the headlights and the hood so that I can have access to the entire engine. I'm now gonna pull the AC condenser out of the way. I'm gonna pull the intercooler, then the radiator and the fan behind it. And then I'm gonna pull the whole intake system off and I'm gonna call that good once I get that done and I'll figure out where to go from there. So got your filter. Ooh, nasty, something was within there. This is a lot cleaner process if you put a tube on the, uh, the spout right there into your bucket. But uh, I wasn't that smart and it's already all over the floor, nothing really else I can do. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And uh, also take off the cap on the top, that'll make it a lot faster. So I'll come back when that's all done. All right, I've removed those brackets. You wanna make sure you have something supporting your uh, radiator, your intercooler, and fan. So get a pry bar behind your bracket after you've taken the bolt out. Literally just push it forward and then hit it. Lower this jack nice and gently. These things should lower down, but in order to get them all the way out, you'll have to undo some wiring and some hoses. Okay. So to get this to detach, you're also going to have to uh, take off this uh, bar on the front here. I can't even remember what it's called. Inner cooler is now out. All I had to do was lift up on it and then set it down trying to clear space around the radiator by removing the large intercooler tubes. So that'll include this one here that goes all the way down and hooks up through the bottom. And this one that I've already taken off that goes on this side in the same sort of pattern. I disconnected the uh, connection there and I have undone the screws. Here. There are two screws, one on each side. There we go. There's the fan. I'll need that later. So here we go. Now I've got access to the coolant tubes that hook the radiator in. And then I can pop this radiator out and that'll be the whole front disassembled as I need it. All right, so I've gotten the intercooler and the radiator out along with the fan. So now I'm going for the uh, coolant reservoir here. I know it seems like I'm jumping around a lot, but I have to clear all areas around the engine so that I can hoist it up using the chain there and that way I'll be able to drop the subframe and get to the transmission. Um, I have a video on removing the coolant reservoir, it can be a pain. And after I get that off, I'll be taking off the shielding around the turbo. There we go. Check that out. This isn't really a normal step, but I'm gonna go ahead and undo the bolts that uh, hold the downpipe into the turbo assembly, just because I'm gonna have to do it anyway later because Literally sitting right there, I've got a brand new stainless downpipe. So I've gotten two of the nuts off of the downpipe, and in order to get the third one, it's uh, down in this hole here, so I'm having to remove this coolant line. Now the important thing about these coolant and oil lines on the side of the turbo, don't lose that, that rate. I think I'm gonna call it a night because it's almost 1.30 in the morning. Alrighty, welcome to the next day. It is no longer 1.30 in the morning. So, 
Right now, I have to figure out the best means of supporting this engine, and then I'm gonna start lifting it just so that you know it is supported. Then I'm gonna crawl under, and I'm gonna start undoing all of the um, subframe mounts. Then slowly lower the engine a little bit and get that transmission out of there. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do a lot of this stuff on camera, so when I come back, the engine is going to be a bit lower, and the uh, subframe is going to be out. I finally got the subframe out. All right, so a lot has happened since I've last recorded um if i were going to do this project differently i would have had the car on the actual lift i would have unbolted the subframe and let it sit on the ground and then lifted the entire body of the car right off of the engine and the subframe and everything right out of the way so that i could have done this job like that because having this car around the engine has made everything a hundred times harder. Well, well, as I'm lifting and dropping the engine over and over again, look what fell out. Look what we finally got off. Now I can access this clutch plate here. Uh, it looks a little bit worn around the edges, but all in all, I could probably reuse this. Um, I am, however, going to replace it anyway, just because I have the part and I might as well, you know, since I've done all the labor, replace it just in case. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unbolt that. Okay, so I have now serviced the transmission. I have um, thrown new clutch in, new, um, yeah, whole new clutch assembly. And I have bolted the transmission back on. If I have any advice to give to any of you who are thinking about doing a transmission job on this particular model or this engine, here's my advice to you. Don't do it. It sucks. It took six hours straight, me and my dad trying to get that transmission on yesterday. Um, ideally, it would have been better if I had had the car on the lift outside, dropped the engine right on the ground, lifted the whole car body up so it was out of the way. But even then, like, just so much wiggling. And I understand transmissions are a difficult thing to get on because you have to have them literally aligned perfectly. But particularly for this vehicle, even my dad, who's put many transmissions on many vehicles, said, this was the most difficult one he had ever had to do. It had never taken him more than an hour. So now that the transmission is back on and bolted up, I'm gonna look for torque specs on those bolts, tighten them up, and then I'm going to put the new downpipe on the back of the engine. I've now got it in. All right, engine is now supporting its own weight. Nothing holding it in. It's got both mounts on the sides put in. It now has the downpipe and the oxygen sensors are in. All right, the car is now on the ground and supporting its own weight. I have the wiring harnesses in the front plugged in, and now it is time to open up this DO88 stuff. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. So the radiator right here and the fan actually have to come in from the top and sit in, and the intercooler has to come from the bottom in the front. Then you mount it in on uh, these screws here. Now all I have left to do and I'll be done is to put these hoses on here. All right, all the DO88 stuff is in. Now all I have left to do is to bolt in these brackets. Okay, she's almost ready. I've just got a few last things to button up. I know it's been a minute since I've filmed anything, but I went to uh, Vermont Tuning, which is town or two over from me and i ordered the stage two plus kit so i've got a bigger turbo and i've got bigger injectors going in soon i also bought the front inlet pipe because he now sells do 88 stuff on the side for his business so i got the front inlet pipe to put on and i'm gonna get this turbo all hooked up and i will show you guys how it sounds when it starts up the whole YouTube thing is kind of getting away from me. If I filmed every little bit and did every how-to that I've had to do for myself in this past two-week period, I would have gotten virtually nothing done. 